Hello everyone, this is the Crimson Cure, welcoming you to the Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. Crimson Knights and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am, of course, your host, the Crimson Cure. And as usual, we're just going to jump right into the topic. Uh, this one is going to be short and sweet. I want to point something out to you. I'm going to share my screen so that you can see this. All right. So what you are looking at right here, just so you can see it is the Black Lives Matter 2020 impact report where they break down sort of uh, what happened to the donation money, how they split the money up. Um, the impact report also includes things like their impact across social media, um, how well their campaigns and ads did um, throughout the course of the year to bring so-called awareness to the issues of Black Lives Matter. And we know that they don't have much to do with the Black men that it's built upon. Um, but there was one part of this where actually there was a couple of parts of this that were interesting, but one that I want to point out to everyone here. And I want you to remember when I started talking about mobility, and I started talking about how women don't understand mobility and don't implement it right and don't use it right. Especially in the black community, when we talk about black women being in charge of the community, and in this case, basically being in charge of what should have been community money, I'm going to tell you what they did with it. In 2020, we selected 30 local organizations, not part of our grassroots apparatus, to be our first cohort of official BLM GNF grantees. As several communities were thrown into heightened political, social, economic, and medical vulnerabilities through C-19, BLM GNF sought to ensure the survival of some of society's most vulnerable Black LGBTQIA folk. The most vulnerable. Before I continue to read this, they are not the most vulnerable of our group because black LGBT community members are part of the larger LGBT community members. And they actually have a lot of political influence. They're also uh, monetarily speaking as a collective. They're affluent. A lot of protections have come to them through the avenue of civil rights that was fought for originally by black people for black people. So that group is not vulnerable, especially not in this sense. But let me continue. Of the 30 organizations selected, 23 of them, much more than half is almost 
75% or more, it's like 80% or something. Uh, organizations selected, 23 of them are led by black LGBTQIA folks and or directly serve these communities in places like Chicago, New York, New Jersey, DC, and Alabama. Our selected organizations are listed below. We have committed a six figure grant to each organization. 23 of what's listed here are for the alphabet community. And you can see the names of them, the Okra Project, TGI Justice, Take, Birmingham, Trans United, Audrey Lord Project, Trans Justice, Breakout, Black Trans Circles, Solutions Not Punishment, the Transgender District, Black Trans Travel Fund, uh, for the G Worlds, uh, Trans Justice Funding Project, Trans Housing Coalition, Homeless Black Trans Women Fund, Black Trans Media, House of Tulip, House of Pentacles, Black Trans Film in the Art. You get the picture. Okay. This, if nothing else, proves that the Black Lives Matter as an organization is not about Black empowerment. This is why women should not be in control of the mobility of their group. Because when she gets in control of the mobility of her group, she do stupid stuff like this. Now, the trans community is a very negligible percentage of the Black community overall. But since Black Lives Matter was an organization that was supposedly built upon the deaths of black men through police shootings, uh, innocent black men, might I add, heterosexual black men, might I add, wouldn't this money be better spent in the inner cities to prevent those types of shootings? Maybe more education, maybe just getting black men off of the street building black male, uh, well, at least male shelters in black neighborhoods to service black men that find themselves in transient positions and homeless position, getting them the mental health that they need, the counseling that they need, uh, perhaps job placement, perhaps living quarters, halfway homes that actually work that are not dependent upon state funds? Wouldn't it have gone better to young black teenage boys in the juvenile uh, system, in the foster care system? Getting those boys some type of discipline, some type of structure in their lives, again, with counseling and other things, to help them transition into adulthood in a positive way. And so maybe they won't get older and have to encounter the police in the negative way that we've seen. I can think of a myriad of ways to utilize the, the, the machine of Black Lives Matter along with its money in order to actually empower and help the Black community. If anybody now listening to this, listening to the sound of my voice, still thinks that Black Lives Matter as an organization is for Black people, for the betterment of Black people as a whole, you get out of the fantasy world. Knock it off. They are not and have never been, despite what they have said, have never been for the empowerment nor the upliftment of the Black community, and especially not Black heterosexual males in the community. In point of fact, they are the group within the black community that Black Lives Matter doesn't want to help. And they say that in their mission statement. You can go do your own research for that. Go to the Black Lives Matter website, look at the mission statement. Everybody's praised and lauded and helped. But when they talk about black heteronormative males, they're disparaged and told that they can't even be part of any of the decision making or any uh, important roles within the Black Lives Matter movements or any of its chapters. 
Yet every time a black man is killed, here comes Black Lives Matter to capitalize off of it, to march and to say one or two flimsy speeches. And then all of a sudden they get millions of dollars of donation from various companies that like to play like they're, uh, you know, behind the concept of Black Lives Matter. And then they turn around and spend the money on a very marginal fraction of the community that doesn't need it because black alphabet community members can take advantage of the same things and the same rights and the same funds that the larger alphabet community can take advantage of in this country. So this is what they do with mobility. Do you understand this now? When black women are ahead, especially a gynocrat, when she gets on top, this is what she does. She doesn't help the community. So for all the gynocrats who disparage black men for not uplifting the community, you're in position to uplift it and you don't. You uplift uh, the alphabet community and then whine when the trans women are taking your men. Don't think I don't know that you whine about that because I see that on social media. You're whining about that. And you, I know that you're whining about it because a lot of trans women are speaking up more and more on social media about how jealous of them you are as natural women and how they can actually look better than you and take your man. Yet you hoist them up. This isn't, isn't even just the larger LGBT community. This is focusing on the trans part of that community, not even the whole community, you know, not even the community as a whole. So you had to ask yourself, what's the point of really pushing the trans, the transgender agenda? Because Biden just got in there and the first thing he did was uh, sign a bunch of executive orders uh, that benefited specifically the Tea Party. Still not convinced? Still think that Black Lives Matter as an organization is for the betterment and advancement of Black people as a whole? Still think they fighting uh, the good fight? Still think their boots on the ground, you know, representing you and representing the ideas that you actually have about your community and what you want? Get out of here. Knock it off. Knock it off. That's what I want everybody to do, knock it off. The other thing that I want everyone to do is sound off in the comment section. What do you think about the disbursement of this money? Matter of fact, I'm going to put the link to that in the description box so that you guys can go and read it in totality. It's like 25 pages or something like that. It's like, no, I'm sorry. It's like 42 pages long, uh, a PDF document. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to put the link to it in the description box. And I want everyone to sound off in the comments and tell me what you think. Go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Uh, and I am going to go ahead and get out of here. Ah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, Crimson Knights. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.